Hello friends, welcome to a new video. Since uh, we are all going through a very tough time, uh, what I wish to tell to you is regarding some of the journeys uh, that I have made. Actually, as part of my teaching career, I had visited uh, many northeastern states um, like uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Assam, Mizoram, etc. So today, uh, I want to take your attention to a particular state that is Mizoram. Okay. So, like uh, before going into the uh, things about Mizoram, uh, let me tell you how I made that journey, like from Guwahati till Mizoram. So it's actually a huge drive. Uh, it was around 18 hours. So me along with my uh, colleagues, uh, we had to do an interview at Pachunga University in Mizoram. Right, Pachunga University that is in Aizwa. So before visiting Mizoram, it's that that you need to have an inner line permit. Like actually this inner line permit in one of my previous videos, I'll give it in the link. I have particularly told you about this inner line permit. This was a law that was made by the British in a way to uh, treat the frontier tribes as a buffer tribe between the uh, between the Chinese Empire and the British India. That is where even now it is uh, prevailing. This act was uh, there since 1873. It was uh, uh, introduced into the Viceroy's Executive Council by Sir Arthur Hope Hose. So it is the act is known as the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation Act and even if you have to visit places like uh, uh, Nagaland, now it's Manipur also and uh, earlier it was not there, Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, you, uh, in parts of Tripura, you need to get an inner line permit. Similarly, you have to visit places like uh, Lakshadweep or in Andaman and Nicobar, you have to get a protected area permit. So that is it. So while we were traveling, right, you can imagine, right, the travel starts uh, at uh, early morning at three o'clock and the next day at uh, by night we are reaching Icewater. Like while moving through, like we are starting from Guwahati, while moving through we crossed places like uh, the Kasi and the Jaintia Hills. So I wanted to take your attention to one thing. Right about the illegal immigration that is there uh, in our um, like media every now and then. The, uh, the route that we were pass, passing through, I will be projecting it in the screen. It will pass from Gohati through Garo Khasi Jaintia Hills. And while we are passing through a particular village called Ratachara village, it is where I was able to clearly see the border demarcation, border area of uh, uh, India and Bangladesh. So um, I clearly understood, I will uh, project that picture to you on your screen. So I clearly understood like how porous the borders were because like down the stream you can see Bangladesh and there cannot be a very strict policy in there because the BSO post will be out there somewhere and every now and then the workers from the Bangladesh will come to in uh, India and in places like Tura or West Caravils they will do their work and uh, by evening they will go back to Bangladesh. So that is the way the porous borders are. And you will understand these things while you visit it by yourself. That is where you will understand that when we read in the books about uh, the border demarcation, Radcliffe line, how India, uh, how India and Bangladesh are suffering till now. I mean, these things you will clearly understand when you go through a journey. And while going into the Mizoram, right, the one thing I re it really uh, like fascinated me is because out of all the northeastern states that I have visited, I will put Mizoram the first when it comes to the roads, when it comes to the infrastructure development and also when it comes to the natural beauty. Right, they have uh, managed it so well. A few things that I wanted to say about Aizwal um, and Mizoram in general is because you cannot do much of a honking in Mizoram because uh, and the people are uh, driving in a much more disciplined manner. And out of the all northeastern states, I will consider Mizoram as the most westernized state. I mean, there are Christian states like Nagaland and all, but still, I find westernization at its peak, maybe in Mizoram. And the population is almost 88% uh, Christian and uh, rest are mostly Buddhists and a few Muslims as well. But in general, it's more of a Christian state. And the problem that, so I will tell you, so, so the Mizoram, earlier it's known as the Lushai Hills during uh, the time of the British and the majority of the, many of the tribes their umbrella term is the name Mizo that is how all the tribes uh, uh, come under that Mizo uh, clan so that is how they got the name Mizoram 
and a few uh, important things that I always uh, wanted to say about Mizoram. First thing is regarding the building construction. So I'll project a few photos about the building construction and also some of the interviews that I have made there. The building construction is done in such a way that it is not hampering the natural incline of the mountains. So what happens is like even uh, during a kind of a landslide or an earthquake, this building can stand really well. It is because of the pillars they make on the incline of the mountain without causing much ecological disbalance. This is one thing that has really uh, like impressed me in Mizoram. And another thing is the way the roads are tarred and the cleanliness in general. So these things, because I was thinking like you are moving through a very uh, like difficult terrain in uh, uh, Lower Assam, like in Barak Valley, when there is a huge influx of migrants, huge population uh, compared to what you see in Gohati, right? And on, on crossing into the Mizoram, you find like uh, the streets are comparatively better. As well as anyway, I can compare it like what I see in Bangalore in the earlier 2000s or even just before that. It is a well-planned, better city. Yes, the roads are a little bit steeper because of the inclination. And another problem that the Mizo society in general is facing is what I find about the AIDS pandemic. Because of the, uh, like, uh, in general being a much more liberal society and also close to the border, you get a lot of drugs. So the drug issue is a problem within in the youth. So, like, the civil society is much aware of it. And every now and then in the Mizo language, you can find these uh, signboards about AIDS. And you will be very, it's very it's kind of funny also because every now and uh, there, if you visit a public toilet, you can find at least two, three condoms also. In a way, the society is much more uh, concerned about uh, preventing the AIDS. And Mizoram is a state in India, out of the population, uh, the percentage of people affected by the HIV is the highest in the Mizoram. And one thing, uh, even I was really surprised being in Mizoram is because uh, I found, uh, initially I thought that uh, this state, being a Christian state like this, people will be much more used to in speaking English. But unfortunately it was the reverse. Because in general people speak Mizo language. And even if you go to a government office, you find less number of people speaking in English. Because even, uh, but other places in Nagaland and I find the English speaking population a little bit more prevalent. But I don't know what it is there, the, but the people are more connected to their tribal roots and tribal language. They speak Mizo, and, but, the, uh, but the alphabet that they use is in English. So in general, you find the English speaking population less, even when you are in the urban city areas. And uh, last but not least, I'll uh, conclude the video by stating uh, a thing about Mizoram that impressed me literally the most is the honesty in general. Because I visited uh, this place called the Reykland Peak. And while we were coming down, even uh, the uh, person who was driving the car, he actually showed me a few areas where I, uh, uh, it's a kind of a small uh, like contraption where they have kept a few fruits. Like in that few of fruits, you can go there, pick a particular fruit and you can actually pay, uh, there will be a small box kept there and that is not even locked. And you can open the box, deposit the money, take the fruit from there. I mean, that itself shows uh, the honesty of the people there. I cannot imagine such a situation like even in India or in Delhi or anywhere where you keep a certain amount of fruit there and you keep a box and that is not even closed. You can open the box, put the money and close it and, uh, and you can take the fruit in whichever way you want. I mean, it's kept like in two, three um, rows where the fruits are kept and subsequently the um, money is also put in those boxes. So this is one thing that really surprised me the most because uh, although I have seen a similar things in many other places, this shows that uh, something that is within the society, that honesty that has not left them. Yes, the state is suffering due to certain ills. Like, uh, there was the issue of militancy till 1986. In 1971, in, I mean, the Mizoram was the only state where the Indian Air Force actually bombed the militants. I mean, imagine how it might have caused uh, the, uh, the mental trauma to the people there. The, never, never ever in the Indian history, the, uh, there was not a territory uh, where the Indian Air Force bombed its own people. That was in Mizoram in 1971 during the time of Indira Gandhi. But by 86, things were sorted out. The Mizo National Front uh, laid down its arms and uh, by 87 and all the state uh, statehood was given. And um, Mizo National Front, lately they went into the politi uh, politics and um, you can say Laldenga. So he became the chief minister of the state. So,
this is what I wanted to share to you is regarding estate. I hope that you got information about the Mizoram, its tribal culture, and also by some of the pics that I have projected to the screen. I believe you got a better idea. So if you like this video, click, uh, uh, subscribe, share it. And if you would like to like me to talk about an, another Northeastern state, uh, please uh, say it in the comments. And I'll be coming shortly with an, another video also with the pics that I have taken during my journey there. Thank you. Have a nice day.